I'm Robson Green, professional actor, part-time fisherman. Fishing was once a relaxing hobby, a gentle escape from the everyday. But a few years ago, I discovered it had a bit more to offer. Now fishing's taken me across the globe. Catching the big... Get in! The bad... Oh, my goodness! Yes! And the downright ugly. I have always wanted to catch one of these! I've hunted fish I've only dreamt of. And that is why we came here! Look at that fish! So where does an extreme fisherman go when you've fished the entire map? Well, they said, now you're fishing off the map. For my next fishing adventure, I want to do one thing. Come to the ends of the earth! To places so remote... Where the hell am I? What the heck is that? The fish have barely seen a hook. Holy shit! Come on! Do not push me! In bloody hell! We could have been taken hostage now. And to places so extreme... <sighs> the hunter... What? ..becomes the hunted. Do something. Ah, shit! Jump fish! I'll be travelling nearly three times around the world. I'm getting excited. Catching fish... Boom! ..where they've hardly evolved. You are looking back in history there. And meeting people... <laughs> ..with the same burning passion. Oh, that is an extreme fish! <laughs> I'm lost for words! I mean, that is unbelievable! This is... Oh! <laughs> extreme... Oh, yes! Oh! Fishing. To start my journey to the ends of the Earth, I'm going to a remote spot in the South Atlantic, billed as the Jurassic Park of fishing, Ascension Island. The only way to get there is to catch a lift with the armed forces. They fly only one day a week, and not always by military plane. Yes, Seychelles. Things are getting a bit weird. So I'm journeying 4,000 miles into the Atlantic to a tiny island seven miles wide. It's a British territory, but it'll be the most remote place I've ever fished. And the adventure starts here. I've got the best seat in the house. I am fulfilling a childhood dream. 300. Welcome to Ascension Island, Robson. Ascension is used by the military and was a vital base during the Falklands War. NASA even tested their moon buggy here. Few people have ever seen this place and I've no idea what to expect as I explore its capital. Welcome to Georgetown. Please drive slowly. I haven't seen a car since I've been here. I can see why they tested the moon buggy on this place. Because I think I've landed on a different planet. At last, some locals. <laughs> Hi, guys. The moon buggy? I'll say this for Ascension Island. It's quiet. There's no native population on Ascension, but around 900 people live and work here, mainly employed in communications or on the bases. It's an amazing backdrop. But I'm more interested in what's out there. 
Because of the way this tiny island rises out of the vastness of the Atlantic Ocean, this place should be surrounded by huge fish. And I've heard that on its day, this place could be the greatest fishing destination in the world. Well, I'm here to find out. It's so remote, it's barely touched by commercial fishing, and it feels like Ascension is the land that time forgot. The Jurassic Park of fishing indeed. It's a hell of a reputation, and I want to put that to the test. So I'm after something prehistoric, and that means a shark. Permission to come aboard? Yes, sir, no problem. Good lad. Luckily, the man to help me catch a monster is no lightweight. He's big, he's German, and he's called Olaf. Hello, Robson. How are you evening, doing? Olaf. How Good are evening, Olaf. Good evening. Olaf, is it true what they say? That Ascension Island is uh, basically a small rock surrounded by prehistoric monsters of the fishy kind? Is it fair to say that? I think that's a fairly good description of it, yeah. You have a very big species, um, mako sharks, thresher sharks, uh, Galapagos sharks. What we are probably going to target uh, tonight is one uh, very big species. It's called a six-gilled shark. Six gills. Just one mile out is a shark feeding ground. They get up to 20 feet long here, too big to bring onto the boat. But if we get it to the side and set it free, it counts as a catch. Oh. Let there be light. But getting it to the side will be up to me. It could be the biggest fish of my life. But thankfully, Olaf's put together some of the most extreme gear I've ever seen. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Tell me what you're doing. I'm trying to give you a sense of how much pressure you're going to have to. Seriously, that's too much. That's far too much pressure. That's, that's going to too much me. already. Be gentle with me, Olaf. That's the biggest piece of bait I've ever used on a fishing trip. I'm nervous, but I'm desperate to see if this place is all they say it is. Are they really monsters from the deep here? Within minutes, we have an answer. Ah, I think we have an inquiry down there. You think there's a bite on there? Oh, you know there's a bite on there. Pretty sure. Oh, hang on, I felt something there. Oh, I felt definitely some... felt something there. I believe there. you. Yeah, something's having a go at that. It's time. In there, mm. exactly. Very good. Yes, we are in. I'm telling you now. There is no, no other way like this that is not a small car. It's more like a double-decker bus, Olaf. <laughs> I knew this would be tough, but nothing has prepared me for this. I keep the weight uh, like this and just use that hand to guide your line. S say again. Right. Oh, ah, oh, shit. Sorry, Olaf. No, I let it go. I'm attached, and if the reel goes in, so do I. Holy shit. But Olaf has done this before. Good man. Ah, here we go again. That fish has just really got pissed off there. Yeah. Okay, guys, you keep holding me. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Oh. Uh, hang on. Put it on. This seems impossible. I'm supposed to get this fish to the surface, but it seems like it's more likely to pull me down to the depths. There's got to be easier ways to catch a fish. Is that for... I've got to bring this beast up more than 300 feet, and I'm already losing my nerve. Olaf? Yeah? Oh, we're nearly there yet, Dad. Yeah, we just have another 80 meters. Come ah, here! Got him! Plan it, Olaf! Don't die now. Bloody hell! Oh! It's like I... Fuck! Not again! Kelly, let's get the black magic, please. This fucking sucks. They need to change the gear, or I'll be pulled into the water. I might have taken on more than I can handle. One second. This is not going well. It's a fucking ridiculous weight. Are you heavy? No, I've not felt the weight like that in my life. Is this gonna yeah. hurt? Yes. Mm. 
It's proving to be the fight of my life. All right, try to get in it again. I can't do anything. It's just you can do it's it. too heavy, man. Try to use a bit of a fishing technique. The lift it slowly. I'm trying to lift right, it slowly. Forward and wind. There we go. Very good. Slowly up. <laughs> It's a good one. Yeah, yeah Robson, I like the way you do it. Uh, liking your accent at the moment, Ola. This is very German. <laughs> uh, come on, and fast down right. the line. That's the way. Come on, because I'm coming. getting pissed off now. Is he doing a good job? Quite frankly, I've had enough. Oh, my God. Holy shit, Ola. Uh, yeah, God, him, oh, Bennett. No problem. All oh, good. Ah! Uh, uh. Lift it slowly and go fast forward and wind at the same time. Here we go, just like any other fish. Yes. That's it. But just as I'm making progress, the pressure on my body starts to tell in an unexpected way. Oh, sorry. It was about to happen. Something had to blow. <laughs> sorry, Olaf, but. Uh, no, it's okay, I could still survive. I think my belly retired and my bum backfired. Uh, yeah, well, uh, I'm really sorry, but uh, basically uh, I need a, there's a costume you? department here, I think. Uh. I've been fighting this beast for 30 minutes, and slowly but surely, I'm starting to win. Uh. Finally, I've got it to the boat. It's exactly what we hoped for. Oh, look at the size! I would say that's 1,100 pounds. That has to be 13, 14 foot long. Yes, that's normal. That's a six kill. That is 1,100 plus pounds. It's a true dinosaur of the deep. He and his relatives have been lurking on the ocean floors for 200 million years. Don't lose the pliers. We need to cut the line, leaving the hook in his lip. Thank you, baby. The hook will dissolve within weeks. No, that was... That was... That was unreal. That was ridiculous. That was bigger than this boat. It's the catch of my life, more than twice the size of anything I've caught before. Hola. <laughs> Thank God you were here. Yeah, thank, thank you, man. God I was it. he was here. <sighs> Over the years, Ascension's become a vital link of international communications. Space missions are tracked from here. The BBC relays programming. And just between us, I think there might be some James Bond-style eavesdropping going on. But in their wisdom, the Ascension authorities haven't forgotten about having fun. It's also home to what was officially known as the world's worst golf course. It doesn't have greens, but browns. This for the championship. And donkey poo. Oh, look at that! God damn it! Most people here are from the sister island of St. Helena, some 700 miles away. They're known as the Saints. The Saints love to fish, and today I'm joining them for a fish fry. That's a fishing competition followed by a knees up. My teammates today are Justin and Kenny G. Robson. Kenny. Kenny, Kenny G? Yeah. yeah. I'm Justin. Justin, how are you? This Kenny G isn't the cheesy 80 sax player. He's a great fisherman, and we need him. Losing is not an option. We are Team Extreme, living the dream. Right. Okay? Let's go. Come on, guys. Right. As you can see, they're over the moon to meet me. We've got three hours to fish for our target, Garupa. There's a prize for the biggest, smallest, and largest number of fish caught. Right. One red. We've got for bait. A small snapper, yeah? Soldier fish. Soldier fish? Or squirrel fish. Squirrel fish. Soldier fish or squirrel fish? I've never heard the likes. They're just making fish names up. They're snapper. <laughs> 
straight away, there's a problem. The best spot has been grabbed by another team. One of them is Justin's girlfriend, so there's no arguing. We're left with a small pier. So there's a prize for the largest garupa and the smallest. And the smallest. Oh. And the most, yeah? Yep. Yeah. We're off. The boys handlining and me with a rod. My instincts are taking over. I've never won a competition before. I'm not your competitive type. But today I am. Our neighbours seem to be catching, but Justin doesn't look entirely on the ball. I don't think all your focus is on the fishing, is it, Justin? Well, I, I think your know. focus is on somewhere else, isn't it? <laughs> it's over there, isn't it? Because your girlfriend's over there. <laughs> they beat us to it. I don't think they beat us to it. I think they uh, stole it. <laughs> Luckily, someone on our team is concentrating. Kenny G is in. There you go, Garupa. Oh, well done! Our first Garupa. You've got to be very, very careful how you handle these fish because one of the reasons why the dorsal spines are coloured like that is to warn you off. They can do some serious damage. It's well equipped, this fish, to defend itself, but it's also well equipped to attack. But Kenny's the hunter today. That's a good garupa, Kenny. Good lad. Get in. They're not wrong. This guy can fish. That is a very nice three pound Rockine Garupa. That could win a prize, couldn't it, Kenny? It could. Yeah? It could. Might have biggest. I don't believe it. Kenny G is on for a hat trick. Kenny! Hey. You're the man. Getting lucky. Justin, I don't know if you've noticed, but there's a pattern emerging here. Kenny's catching everything, we're catching bog all. Yeah. Mind you, we could just leave him to it. <laughs> We've just an hour of fishing left. We need a giant, and we can't leave it all down to Kenny G. Luckily, I'm in. Hey, you got snake? Oh, it's up. With the wrong thing, that won't count. It's the funniest looking garupa I've ever seen. Kenny's got another, Kenny's got another garupa! Kenny, man! Uh, Kenny, up. we're gonna win! We're gonna win, <laughs> Kenny! It's all down to teamwork, isn't it? Teamwork! <laughs> and that has to be a competition winning Rockhine Garupa. You're looking at a good seven pounder there. We're gonna have a good party tonight. Good lad, Kenny. That was not luck. Do you know what that was? That was the magic of Kenny G. Yes. Cue the music. Wow. He may not have the other Kenny G's blonde highlights, but this man has a magic all of his own. We're going to win. Georgetown beckons, and according to the signs, it's not just donkeys we've got to look out for. Are there really wild camels here? We're not going to hang around to find out. As the other teams gather with their catches, it's clear we're up against some stiff competition. But Susie, the organiser, isn't giving anything away. So you've got 10 pounds and 12 ounces. Not too bad. It's not too bad. What does that mean in terms of position and medals? It seems there's still everything to play for. How is that for number one? Oh, yeah. OK, that's seven pounds. Oh, yeah. I'm giving the prizes. And guess what? We didn't catch most fish. Remember, size isn't everything, guys. Come on. <laughs> we didn't win smallest garupa. Our big fish didn't even win largest garupa. But it wasn't a complete washout. And the runner up for the largest garupa goes to. Mr. Robson Green! Yeah! Like I always say, it's all about teamwork. The 
thing is, I didn't catch it. <laughs> Thank goodness for the wonderful human being, Kenny G, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah, really well. Well I've got to be pretty pleased with that. To the team extreme. Friendly people, fish on the barbie, and I'm the centre of attention. Good times. <laughs> The coastline of Ascension Island is dry and volcanic, but rising up in its centre is something very different. It's called Green Mountain, a man-made forest in the clouds that generates rain. Today, I'm fishing with the conservationist who looks after it, morning. Stetson Stroud. Good morning, Robson. Stetson. Uh, how are you? Hi, good to see you. So, why am I here? Yeah, well, I'm going to take it to, to, to do some real uh, eel fishing, but not with a line or a hook. Uh, this is going to be uh, something different. It's thought none other than Charles Darwin dreamt the forest up, but he can't have imagined what man would do with the rest of the island. But here, according to Stetson, is the best spot for eels, at a place apparently called Ladies Loo. To get to this toilet of eels isn't easy. I thought Green Mountain was wild, but this lunar landscape beats it. Our bait is something eels like more than anything else, rotting tuna heads. We're after moray eels, which have extremely sharp teeth that will lock onto the bait. So we'll have to hook them out with a gaff. If we see any, that is. Yeah, get some chum going here. That'll get them going, get a bit of blood going. There you go. <laughs> it's hardly the poetry and finesse of fly fishing, <laughs> is it? But it works. Within minutes, we've got some interest. Oh, oh, there he is. It's a spotted moray eel, and that means Action stations. Yeah, there he is. Go, 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 go. You got it. You got, got it. Go, go, go. <sighs> Don't worry. <laughs> okay, okay. Get him. Get him. Get him. <laughs> oh, shit. It's off. Actually, they're a bit scary, these more rays. I'm not sure I want to eat one now. So Stetson, if you could compare the taste of eel with anything, what's it taste like? And don't say chicken. <laughs> uh, it's a, you know, I've tasted uh, sole, Dover sole, uh, in the UK some time ago. Yeah. And it, it, it reminds me a bit of the Dover sole, but then the skin fries a bit like a, uh, like pork scratching. It's pork like... scratching, so it's a cross between <laughs> Dover sole and pork scratchings. Have you ever heard the like? <laughs> Thankfully, this is Ascension, and that means there's plenty more fish in the sea. Where, where is he? Oh, he's here, he's here, he's here. Yeah. You got it, you got it. It's another Thank spotted you know. moray. Go on. Take him there, hang on. I'll give him, a, give him a wear. Watch! Get him, get him. Watch it. As the eel is dispatched, Stetson doesn't appear quite the hippie I thought he was. <laughs> OK, it ain't pretty. It is brutal, but that's the reason we use that method of dispatching them. Those teeth are incredibly vicious. They go into you and they won't come out. Same principle as a fishing hook. Now then, this is the spotted moray. Now people say they are dangerous, they are vicious, and above all, they say they're ugly. But I think they're beautiful. And according to Stetson, they're very tasty. A cross between Dover sole and pork scrunchions. So let's find out, shall we? Eel are common fish throughout the world, but not usually for dinner. Tell me about the... Yeah. Um, the crispy skin? Yes, yeah, crispy skin, look. Watch, it's hot. Oh, beautiful, Watch beautiful hot. fluffy flesh there. Yeah, it does. Tastes like Dover sole. 
Doesn't taste like pork scrunchions. And that is absolutely stunning. <laughs> that is stunning. Really, really beautiful. Wow. Stetson, what is that wooden box over there? Some sort of security pole? Well, actually, that is a, a toilet. It's a wooden toilet. Uh, right ah, of course, it's the ladies' loo. I'll just have to cross my legs then. This is an amazing place, and my adventure at the ends of the earth is about to get even better. I'm meeting a South African sports fisherman drawn to ascension for the world-class fishing. Colin Chester, I presume? Robson. Pleasure to meet you. Nice to see you. Yeah. Well done. Is it a good day for it? It's going to be an excellent day for it. Um, the ocean's looking really, really um, it's nice and smooth. Yeah. Uh, light winds today, Good. Uh, which is not normal for ascension, but fantastic, fantastic conditions. Yeah. Our target is the legendary marlin. Here in the rich Atlantic waters, they grow to record-breaking sizes. It's among the fastest and most powerful fish in the ocean. But if anyone can catch one, me and my new buddy can. Try to look cool, Robson. And don't let that big step break your stride. Nice. It's Starsky and Hutch, Butch and Sundance. Or is it Laurel and Hardy? Seriously, I'm worried about today. A marlin would be a huge catch. And we've got an unnervingly small boat. The giants out there could do a lot of damage to it. And to me. On top of that, we're taking away the chair to bring it in standing up. A method I've never tried with a marlin before. So this is what it's going to be like. Oh. <laughs> so, why are we doing that, Colin? Why are we standing up and not sitting down? Well, first of all, wonderful way of fishing. Puts you in direct contact with the fish. It's just that exciting, you know, and it's, it brings us back to the modern roots, so to speak, and fishing like the old boys did in the frontier days. Uh, so we're going back to the days where men were men and fish were fried. Yes. Yeah. So I've got a man up, have I? You got a man up. Oh, 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 that's gonna be difficult. I wear makeup for a living, you know. But the morning disappears, and we don't catch a thing. Been trawling now for about three hours. Nothing. Maybe the waters off Ascension Island are fallible. Our chances are fading. We wait some more, and then a sign. Oh, they're all at the front there. Dolphins always bring luck. Something's attacking the lure. Come on. Go, 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 go. What have we got? Is that a bill? Go, 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 go. Go, 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 Justin. Go, Justin, go. It's running. Now listen to that! We have got a very good fish on here! Yeah, we've got a marlin! We've got a marlin! Oh, no! Oh, no, we've got a marlin! We've got to try and get some line in. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Think? Yes. Go left, go left, go Quick left, Justin! That's it. But it's enormously powerful. That's it, my man. No, no slack. Slack's our enemy. I tell you what, man, there is no other feeling like this when you're fishing. When you have a creature on the end of your line, you just get this rush that just starts in your feet and goes right to your head. But then, with it getting close to the boat... <sighs> definitely a blue, yeah? Disaster. Oh, he's off. Oh, shit, man. Damn! Fuck. Fuck. 20 meters away, and we lost him. Oh, no. 
No, the sun was out, the dolphins came. Everything was right. It was going to be a story with a happy ending. There's always another, another marlin out there to catch, my friend. Oh, God, that's painful. Damn, uh, I can't actually look at that because I know there's something more magnificent on the end of it. I really can't look at that. Put it away, Colin, because I'm going to lose it in a second. There we go. Out of sight, out of mind, eh? It's hard to take, but this marlin has got the better of us today. I'm fishing at the ends of the earth on Ascension Island. Just inches from the shore are huge numbers of black durgan. They thrive around oceanic islands like this, feeding on anything from plankton to dolphin poo. Now, Ascension Island is one of the few places where you don't need a rod and reel, or any tackle for that matter, to catch a fish. This is a first for me, a chance to catch a fish by hand straight out of the sea. They're tricky little blighters. <laughs> Come on, Robson, there's millions of them. You've got to catch more. Yeah! <laughs> I've just caught a fish with my bare hands. But this is no ordinary fish. Take a look at this fella here. In these parts, they call him the Black Durgan. But you'll probably know it as the trigger fish. Where it gets its name from is this little spine here, shaped like the trigger on a gun. And there's not hundreds or thousands of these fish around here. There are literally millions. And basically, they provide an everlasting buffet for the big game fish around here. There we go. But trigger fish aren't the only source of everlasting buffets. With so few residents here, there are plenty of fish. And I've heard about a guy from St. Helena called Noddy who can turn a short boat trip into a fish fest like you wouldn't believe. Here's the fella everyone's been talking yeah. about. Noddy. Hello, Mr. Robinson. How are you? I'm very well. How are you, Noddy? Good, good sir. Good. How long have you been fishing around here? I've been here for 26 years. 26 years? Yeah. 26. And you love going out every day? I love going every day. Yeah? And I've heard the fish we're after today it requires strength. Yeah? Oh, you need more than strength. You need more than strength? Yeah, I've heard you need balls of steel. A lot of that. <laughs> The boat might not be the biggest, but Noddy looks like a proper fisherman to me. We're going to have some fun today. It's an interesting vessel. Patrick, how are you? Good to see you. Noddy has the type of face that tells a thousand stories, doesn't he? I've heard so much about this guy. Not only about his fishing, let me tell you. And he looks a bit like Morgan Freeman. Today, we're going for what sells. With the rods, we're after tuna and wahoo. And with the hand lines, we'll be going for deep water fish like snapper, jack, or our main target, deep water bullseye. We've got to keep the local booby birds from snatching our catch. Because straight away, we're on. How far is this line down? 400 feet, sir. Oh, man. I didn't know I was going to get a full body workout. Dear me, Noddy, it's getting dark. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ, it's taken an eternity. But it's exactly what we hoped for. Bullseye! I look at that fish. Wow! First time I've ever seen a deep water bullseye in the flesh. Look how vibrant that orange is. I'm speaking quickly because we've got a big fish on the back there. But the reason why you know it's a deep water fish, look at the eyes, look how big they are. Look how big the pupils are to let as much light in as they can. That is a stunner and very, very good eating. That is prehistoric. Good start, Noddy. But there's still the small matter of a fish on at the back of the boat. It's funny when you're fishing with experienced anglers. Patrick just went, there's a fish on. 
and thanks to him, I've just got to bring it in the last few metres. Oh, yeah. Doing a good run there, trying to run away. We've got any colour. Oh, that is a good-sized tuna. That is one beautiful... Yellow 18, 20 pound yellowfin. 25 pound. Yeah. And there's lots of these rounds here. Oh, yeah. And the Latin name of this fella, Tunus albacorus. The word Tunus derives itself from to dart away quickly. And these fellas can accelerate from naught to about 50 mile an hour in the blink of an eye. It's a Lamborghini, a Ferrari, an Aston Martin of the ocean. In a UK supermarket, that's worth nearly 150 quid. Noddy will sell it for about 15. Oh, nice boobies. Is this the wife? My wife, yeah. That's your wife. <laughs> nice lady. Does your wife mind you fishing every day of your life? No. She doesn't? No. No? No, it's too clear to get rid of me sometimes. <laughs> and there's more to come, because the bite is on. Oh, Lord, I'm going to bring a bigger fish up 400 feet. Come on. In fact, fish start throwing themselves at the boat. I'm into one, Noddy's into one. Noddy's caught so many of these fish, he's a bit of a virtuoso on that rod. It's like watching Hendrix, man. Oh, yeah, it's a good sized fish, Noddy. My line feels strangely heavy. Holy moly. Noddy's tuna comes in. Good sized tuna, Noddy. A fresh, beautiful fish there. And there's a blackjack, too. I mean, absolutely stunning. At last, the reason I'm done in becomes clear. It's a double whammy. Amberjacks. Noddy, how's about that? My goodness. But it's not over. Oh, no. Yet again, <clears throat> went into another ascension predator, and this could be the biggest one of today. It's pulling like a train. Oh, really? Could be the biggest tuna of today. It's going to be a long fight to get this one up. Any big here. And I'm feeling every bit of it. <laughs> all right, Noddy, all right, Patrick. I'm not like you, all right. <sighs> God, Lord. But eventually. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. And that is a fine end to an extraordinary fishing day. I could wax lyrically about what's gone on in the last hour, but I'm not going to. I'm going to let the visual speak, because that is an extreme fish. And you know what? They just keep coming. I don't know what to say. In an hour and a quarter, we've caught a ridiculous amount. I've never needed a crane to bring in a catch before. Wow. That is some haul. That would bring about a thousand pounds back home easily. Right. Patrick, Noddy, you're the experts. I'm your student for the day. After every trip, these guys have to fill it their catch. So, incision here. Right. Which is no easy task. Do you know what? This is like an episode of the Generation Game. In fact, the cutting is the simple bit. These guys are like surgeons. I'm more like a butcher. A bad butcher.
The job is to remove as neat a fillet as possible. There you have it. But sometimes it's better just to let the masters do their work. A 25 pound tuna like this gives around half that weight to fill it. And the leftovers make a meal for my old mates, the trigger fish. Seem to like this. Wow. Oh my word. Oh my word, look at that. That's mad. Bonkers. Insane. How healthy is this place? Here at the ends of the earth, I've had my most bountiful trip ever. I have never seen anything like this. My first fish plucked straight from the ocean. Yeah! <laughs> the largest fish of my life. That is 1,100 plus pounds. And one of the scariest. <gasps> Got him. Plus a prize winning grouper. Second place, but still. Ascension Island has been unique. <laughs>